Hi all, welcome to the special talk on Higgs boson and origin of the universe. You can see that the scientist in CERN touching the Godson particle, that is God's particle, Higgs boson. Are we trying to touch the God who created the universe? That is a question which I would like to answer in this session. And this is the very words written by the Nobel Committee on why Englert and Peter Higgs were awarded Nobel Prize in Physics in 2013 for the theoretical discovery of Higgs boson, which was confirmed uh, through experiments in ATLAS and CMS in Large Hadron Collider. Now the talk is arranged in such a way that it suits for general audience. I will talk for little kids. It is like a fairy tale. So in the chapter 1 of this fairy tale, we will talk about the standard model and the revolutionary concepts in modern physics. And in chapter 2, I will talk about Higgs field, Higgs boson and origin of universe and origin of mass. And in the last part, I will talk about large hadron collider. Chapter 1. What is standard model and what are the revolutionary concepts in modern physics? That is the first topic which I would like to talk. Physics always keep on changing our understanding. You can see there was a olden camera and now we have changed to a digital camera. So what happens is that we get more clarity, more understanding to all the underlying physical concepts that we see in the nature. Uh, one of the such example is that uh, the geocentric universe which was one pro once propagated in the scientific field where the earth was at the center and everything else revolved around earth that concept altogether changed with the evolution of telescope and other observations and now we are moving to heliocentric universe where sun is at the center now again these concepts are again changing and right now there are many thoughts that we are revolving around a black hole and such concepts are also coming up and that is why the, we say that physics always keep on changing our understanding. Now we also thought that uh, light is a wave very before but then after photoelectric effect was discovered we know that light has a particle nature too. Today we know that light is having dual nature that is it is neither a particle or a wave. So that is why uh, even in space, time and mass everything was changing, the views were changing that absolute concepts which involved on these fundamental quantities changed with the evolution of relativity and now we know that space, time and mass are relative. Likewise, in uh, around 1930s, uh, electron, proton, neutron were considered the fundamental particles. But as time evolved, more and more particles were discovered and thanks to Gelman, Feynman, etc. who postulated the existence of Cox, leptons and gauge bosons. So that right now, we feel that these are the fundamental particles rather than electron, proton and neutron. And this happens, you see, when time evol evolves, we first thought that the fields around us is continuous. Like when we see a waterfall at a distance, we feel that the water is continuous. But if at a closer look, we can see that this waterfall is actually a large combination of smaller particles. So likewise, the field which we actually believed to be continuous, our understanding changed and now we know that the field is made up of particles. And uh, once we thought uh, mass is an inherent property, you can see an apple here, which recalls to the famous story where uh, Newton thought mass as an inherent property. But now the recent development in particle physics, we have found the God's particle, which is the reason for mass. So now the mass is due to the Higgs boson. So these ideas are constantly changing. So people often say or often ask, are physics people uh, crazy people trying to find crazy things? 
So I would like to quote the same the answer made by Niels Bohr. He says that this question is which divides us, and I will say that physics are still not crazy enough to have a chance of being correct. He says that our theory is crazy, but it is not cra crazy enough to be true. So right now let me share with you some of the revolutionary concepts that made standard model possible in modern physics. And one of the most craziest person who put forward this idea is Albert Einstein. And he put forward the concept of length contraction, time dilation, as well as he is the person who thought about mass expansion. All this space, time and mass are relative concept. And thanks to Albert Einstein's E is equal to mc square revolutionary equation, which changed our perspective to matter, that matter can change into radiation, energy, and uh, this person should be considered as the craziest person who put forward all these revolutionary concepts in modern physics. And in my earlier childhood days, we used to joke about it. What is the difference between a man and a superman? And you know, these jokes are very popular. Likewise, uh, I, I would like to put some uh, physics to it also. You see, Superman has a larger difference than what is coming in comic books. Superman uh, is like, uh, say, he is 175 centimeter in length and probably he is a 60 kilogram man. So, if Superman is able to uh, move at a speed, velocity equal to c by 2, his uh, mass is changing to 69 kilogram by the famous mass expansion equation m is equal to m0 by root of 1 minus v square by c square and his length will reduce to 152 centimeter by the equation l equal to l0 into root of 1 minus v square by c square where this root of 1 minus v square by c square is called the Lorentz factor and if he travels at a velocity of 0.99 c then his mass again increases to 425 kilograms while he gets shortened to 24 centimeters. So these are some very crazy ideas which is not uh, as simple as we can think about like a common man. And if there is one more line that is if the person superman is traveling at, at 0.999 c then his mass becomes 1341 kilograms and his length reduces to 7 centimeters. And there are many interesting stories like twin paradox, grandfather paradox, all these trying to visualize this concept of uh, time dilation. And this is more exotic story than length contraction or mass uh, expansion. You can see that there are two brothers, say twins, one is selected for a space travel at a speed very much close to that of speed of light and when he comes back after some say 20 or 30 years he finds himself to be younger than his twin brother and these all things are such concepts which uh, needs deeper understanding and likewise uh, e is equal to mc square is also a very celebrated equation and this equation is considered to be a milestone because it resulted in some of drastic changes in the world. We know that in the World War II in 1945, United States conducted two atomic bombings against the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan. And you can see the mushroom cloud over there in Hiroshima after dropping of that little boy, atomic bomb. And uh, uh, then there is a fat man mushroom cloud resulting from the nuclear absorption uh, over Nagasaki which rises to 18 km into air and this is due to the hydrogen bomb that uh, exploded and uh, it almost killed uh, around 1 lakh people at an instant in Hiroshima and around 80,000 people in Nagasaki and this death came in just seconds and these photos uh, shows the intensity of that uh, explosion and intensity of that interaction that happened. 
even though these uh, bombs are very small and this crew who carried this bomb is considered to be the national heroes the effects that it caused in the millions of people is still there and uh, people are still trying to recover from the impact that it created anyway uh, the situation in 1945 in hiroshima and nagasaki was very blood and you can see the photographs where you can see that there is not even a single building standing tall over there everything was completely uh, scattered shattered into ruins but within 60 or 70 years they are able to come back to such a situation this is a situation of hiroshima in 2020 and 2010 and you can see the nagasaki at 2010 this has deeply evolved and now these are tourist centers which says that uh, probably there is a will power uh, from whatever ground zero we were we can definitely reach back and the next person which i would like to talk about is another craziest person his name is boss so we can say that uh, great scientist seems to come in two categories some uh, who are apparently poor in studies like albert einstein while others with a brilliant record like boss so once uh, boss mathematics teacher gave 110 marks out of 100 for sn boss because boss has not only answered all questions correctly but some of them in more than one way and uh, another incident is that when he was doing his graduation his professor ray used to make this young satyendra boss to sit in a stool by his side during lectures just to prevent him from asking difficult questions and you can see that uh, he has uh, uh, graduated post graduated from presidency college and that to in 1915 his this is his mark list and you can see he has scored 98 85 100 89 88 94 98 84 and this was a grade or marking system which he got uh, in 1915s where the mark which uh, around 60 means you are uh, capable of appearing for ics indian uh, civil service exams so those on those times uh, his iq his performance in marks were were beyond uh, comparison with any other students who studied in those times and one interesting thing is that during his research times he used to write papers and uh, regarding the existence of certain particles uh, which come all together in a ground state so satyendra bose tried to publish this there are existence of such particles called which we know as bosons right now and he tried to share with albert einstein so this is a letter he has written while he was working in dhaka university in physics department he says that i have ventured to send you the accompanying article for your perusal and opinion where he was mentioning about the existence of bosons where all the particles comes to the ground state or particles can coexist in a single state and which doesn't depend on pauli's exclusion principle so he was writing that to albert einstein and look the language look the way he is trying to present things he is saying that i am anxious to know what you think about it and you will see that he has tried to deduce planck's radiation law uh, only assuming the concept of phase space that derivation we have already studied in our msc class in statistical mechanics course and uh, he says that he doesn't know german to translate the paper and if you see that paper is worth publishing he is asking albert einstein to publish in sidrich for physics thou a stranger to you he is saying that uh, i don't feel like making a request i don't hesitate to make a request because uh, from albert einstein is what we are profiting from so he is uh, he is considering albert einstein as his guru or something like that and and he says that i don't know uh, whether you remember me 
I was the one who translated your paper on relativity when you came to Calcutta. So that is a very interesting point which you have to note that Albert Einstein was able to translate uh, Einstein's paper to uh, uh, the native language in India, so in English, from German to English and he is such a humble being that he is ready to say that, uh, uh, he is ready to accept that the bigness of Albert Einstein. And uh, these are the some thoughts about uh, uh, Satyendra Bose. And now we come to what is the situation right now. We have gone through a long course in nuclear physics and we know that the matter, inside the matter there are atoms and inside atoms there is nucleus and electrons and inside nucleus there is protons and neutrons and inside this proton and neutron there are quarks and the quarks are of three types up quark, down quark and strange quark then there is altogether a new generation of quarks arrived and thanks to many of the persons who contributed in finding this number of particles like Rutherford started these things by firing alpha particles at gold foil and seeing them bounce back Two, in 1960s where we uh, study about the Stanford Linear Accelerator Center, California where we were able to collide protons, neutrons together to get understanding about quarks. So these changes made revolutionary ideas in modern physics and if you wait till 2000 we can see that in from 1897 from electrons to the second generation of uh, particles like neutrinos, charm core, mu, strangeness to neutrino, top particle, beauty particle, beauty cork, etc. were found out and these are called the first generation, second generation, third generation of particles. Now coming to chapter 2, we can see the Higgs bosons we will talk about Higgs bosons and origin of universe. Now everything was fine and going well but there are this number of things in standard model and people were very well accepting these things. But then Peter Higgs thought about the hypothetical particle that hold them together. He said that it must be a peculiar one, a particle which is for a reason that the mass exists. So he predicted that there should be something additional other than the gauge bosons which are able to bind these quarks resulting in variety of particles. So how to explain Higgs boson? So I would like to share an interesting story. In 1993, the UK science minister William Bailegrave issued a challenge to physics to answer this question. And uh, the question was what is Higgs boson? And he was trying to write, he was asking this students to write it in one side of a paper. So David Miller, a participant, uh, he won a bottle of champagne for the following description which I am going to tell you right now. And now this description is right now ad adopted by CERN to explain Higgs boson. Uh, you can see a small theater here where there are blue colored shirt people sitting out there. These are called the Higgs bosons. And once a superstar enters this theater, the superstar is recognized by this audience. So the audience try to gather around this superstar. That is the situation we can see. So what is the value of the superstar? So is the gathering. If Mohalla comes, the gathering will be high. If a simple man who is not uh, just uh, appeared in one or two films, he comes, the gathering will be slow. So according to the value of the superstar, the gathering changes. So that is a situation which you have to understand. We will try to see a small video to understand the same. At the Big Bang, tightly packed super energetic particles filled each minute drop of space time. As a drop stretched and cooled, its particles began to lose their energy. The mysterious property known as mass 
had not yet come into being. A hundredth of a billionth of a second after the Big Bang, when the temperature had dropped a fraction, something strange began to happen. The entire universe seems to have become permeated with a field or presence that dramatically materialized in a similar way that steadily cooling water suddenly turns to ice. This phase change into what is now known as the Higgs field appears to have had a remarkable effect on the elementary particles that had previously been whizzing about at the speed of light. Some particles travel through the Higgs field virtually unimpeded, but other types of particles were dragged to slower velocities by varying amounts. It was as if the Higgs field was acting as a kind of selective treacle. The more the particles were slowed by the Higgs field, the more of their energy has been condensed into a super concentrated form of energy known as mass. Einstein showed that energy and mass were interconvertible. Energy can become mass, and mass convert back to energy. The Higgs field appears to share these two manifestations differently for our four particles. The electron is mainly energy, the muon a bit more mass, the W particle more still, and the top quark is nearly all mass and very little energy. But how can this Higgs field confer mass on a particle? In the quantum mechanical world, fields such as the Higgs field are envisaged as being made up of many tiny particles. These messenger particles that convey the effects of such fields are known as bosons. In this case, they'd be Higgs bosons. On closer inspection, the Higgs field is far from static. Its fluctuating levels are represented by Higgs bosons coming into and out of existence. The result is a boiling sea of jostling particles. Now when our electron enters this field, it slips past the Higgs particles with ease. The muon, being less slippery, encounters more friction with the Higgs field. The W particle makes quite heavy weather of its passage, with the Higgs particles getting quite a purchase on it and slowing it down considerably. Finally, the top quark locks readily with the Higgs bosons and is slowed down greatly, converting much of its kinetic energy into mass. So this idea was been put forward by a student called David Miller and and his idea is being right now used officially by CERN to explain Higgs bosons. So Higgs bosons are these blue colored particles and the superstars are this up core, down core, charm core, top core or any type of particle which we see and its attribute of mass is due to how this Higgs particle adhere to the original particle. Now this is what we believe right now there is a big bang and then around in 10 raise to minus 43 seconds that is the Planck's time there is a quantum gravity epoch we still don't know what is there in this quantum gravity epoch but on that time everything was in a super excited state where there was no distinction between uh, strong force, weak force, gravitational force or electromagnetic force. Now coming to 10 raise to minus 34 seconds then you can see this is called the grand unification epoch where there could be some rules, some equations, some set of equations to explain all the three, all the four actually, four interactions by sing single equations. And this comes in the radiation dominated area where more or less it was radiation which was acting over there. And coming to this electro weak epoch then there is a divergence like by uh, the strong force created by itself and the electro weak interactions can be explained by a single equation. And then there is a lepton epoch where there is this disappearance of um, positrons and 
then combinations of quarks happened and this happens in leptons then there is a photon epoch where there is nucleization and formation of this helium nucleus and this comes in 10 raised to 13 seconds and then the universe becomes again from that there is a matter dominated era and the universe becomes more or less transparent and within 1 billion years the galaxy and stars were formed and right now it is around the um, 13.8 billion years right now we are in the present state and we can see galaxies stars and this is the story which we believe in the physics have so many proofs regarding this big bang theory summary is that uh, higgs field is an old prevailing field it is created from a singularity called a big bang and some say that it is a one centimeter singularity and different particles interact in different ways giving the mysterious property of mass. So um, that is how in standard model along with this uh, 6 plus 6, 12 fundamental particles plus 4 fundamental force carriers they are needed to be anchored by this Higgs boson and this was actually being established in Fermi National Accelerator Laboratory. So right now standard models mean 6 plus 6 plus 4 plus 1 and this number of part interaction particles are necessary for explaining standard model. And as Stephen Hawking says, the greatest enemy of knowledge is not ignorance, it is the illusion of knowledge. We feel that we are very knowledgeable, that is the fundamental mistake that people are doing to themselves we should understand our ignorance and try to eradicate it and uh, we have to accept that we are still improving still trying to incorporate more particles still with an open mind science is approaching things if you are doing that then science will improve and now coming to the chapter 3 we will talk about the large hadron collider you can see a very beautiful picture of LHC here and it is the world's largest and highest energy par uh, particle accelerator and it was built by European organization for nuclear research CERN in 1998 to 2008 where we are allowing physics to test and predict different theories of particles and high energy physics particularly the existence of this Higgs boson and large family of new particles. And this LHC is a 27 kilometer tunnel and in circumference and it is 175 meters deep and it comes in Frank Swiss boundary and its synchrotron is designed to collide opposing particles beams of either protons up to 7 tera electron volt. It is a very high energy and it can also reach up to 574 tela electron volt per nuclear and it was built in collaboration with around 10,000 scientists and engineers from all over 100 countries as well as 100 of universities and laboratories on 10 september 2008 the proton beams were successfully circulated in the main ring of lsc for the first time and you can see the internal structure, the core jets which are being evolving at the Fermi lab and LSC will operate at higher energies very soon and uh, it will be shut down for 20 months like upgrading for more and more energies. So let me share some of these interesting stories about LSC. So if you are trying to smash protons which are moving at 99.999999 time of percentage of speed of light onto each other so it will create conditions a fraction of a second after big bang and the LSE experiment try and work out what happened and definitely mass expansion does happens and the large hundred collider is able to calculate this with accuracy 
and LIC is located in circular tunnel like it is a big football field underground and we are able to maintain a temperature about 1.9 Kelvin and also 10 raised to 7 Kelvin in case where the collusion takes place. So the coldest and the hottest place is actually in Earth is large hadron collider. And these are uh, some of the main uh, detectors in this facility that CMS is compact muon solenoid, LHCB is large hadron collider beauty, Atlas is a toroidal LHC apparatus and Alice is a large ion collider experiment. And the data are pouring out from LSC around 15 pendabytes of data are coming every uh, year and that means uh, if you are trying to store that in CDs it will stack up one upon another to reach moon and this data are accessed and analyzed by thousands of scientists around the world and here you can see Higgs uh, in Large Hadron Collider and we will try to see a video. <laughs> Welcome aboard the Large Hadron Collider. Your journey today will take you 14 billion years back in time to a moment just fractions of a second after the Big Bang. A moment when many young protons like yourselves were whizzing around full of energy, colliding with each other and helping to create the universe as we know it now. Some of you will be involved in such collisions today and I regret to say that some of you won't make it home. The whole world appreciates the sacrifice you are making to push back the frontiers of science. And who knows, some lucky one amongst you may have a brief existence as an exotic particle. We are currently travelling at approximately 0.314 the speed of light, or 211 million miles per hour, and are accelerating towards the booster tubes and synchrotron circles. Hold on to your lunge. And on to the big circle itself. 27 kilometers of engineering miracle. You are surrounded by some of the biggest and coldest magnets on this earth. Don't worry if you are starting to feel a little heavy. By the end of the trip, you will be 7,000 times your original mass. They are now bending the beams. Remember, there will be a full debrief later for those of you that make it. We are looking for Higgs boson particles, tiny black holes, dark matter, or anything else a little unusual which might help prove one theory or another. Good luck everyone. Collision in three, two, one. particles are being detected in LSC and that is how it happens again and again we try to repeat the experiment and see Higgs boson and ultimately we have found it and then Nobel Prize did happen. So I want to say that um, what Albert Einstein used to say like I have deep faith that the principle of universe will be actually simple and beautiful and we think that we are big person, knowledgeable person, that, that, that thing doesn't count anymore because you can see the photo taken by the Voyager 1 in 1990s where it sailed away from Earth more than 4 million light, uh, 4 million dis uh, kilometers distance and they took a picture and you can see that Earth has a tiny blue dot, such enormous is our universe and you feel yourself as a big person that is a fundamental mistake this every every person is making in this universe and there are many questions which you would like to ask me i know that let like us where this singularity exists before the big bang uh, how this singularity occurs and how many more new particles will be discovered these questions actually I don't know. I, these questions are open to all 
So I can say that we are looking with a bigger mind, we are ready to accept new particles, expand our thoughts. We should understand that the greatest enemy of knowledge is not knowing, is not ignorance. It is the illusion that you know something that is creating the biggest mistake in the world. So let us keep our life open and try to understand these things. Thank you all. See you in the coming class where I will talk about neutrinos. Thank you.